what is proved and what's imaginary in evolutionary theory. I think we have to make a distinction between microevolution and macroevolution. Microevolution means minor changes in an organism, and we can observe this. For example, we can breed dogs. For example, if we want bigger dogs, we can take a big female dog and a big male dog and mate them, and their offspring will be big. But some will be bigger than others. So if we take the biggest and mate them, then we'll get gradually bigger dogs. But they're still dogs. They're simply a variety of dogs. And we can do the similar thing with making the hair of the dog longer and shorter. If you breed the dogs with long hair, they will gradually develop longer and longer hair. If you want dogs with shorter hair, you breed dogs with shorter hairs together. And gradually you can breed dogs with shorter hairs. You can breed dogs for size. If you want smaller dogs, you breed you know, the smaller ones. So. We can observe this, that there is differential reproduction, you know, you know, according to selective breeding. We can actually observe this and we can demonstrate it. What we can't demonstrate is that is the production of new features of organisms. For example, you know, dogs don't have wings, so is it possible to breed dogs with wings? No, you can't do that. That's, now you can speculate that because it would be a good thing if dogs would fly, that you know, gradually over many millions of years, some of them might develop wings. Just like they propose that uh, some species of mammals develop wings, like bats bats can fly. So originally there, they proposed there was some mammal that was just crawling around on the ground on four legs like mammals do, but then somehow or other they propose that some of them developed wings and learned to fly. That's the imaginary part of the theory of evolution this uh, idea that radically new features of organisms can arise by this process of selective breeding. Now in the case of humans breeding dogs, it's some intelligent being that's guiding the breeding but and is making the selection which dogs to breed to get longer hair or bigger or smaller dogs now Darwin proposed that there is a kind of natural selection that goes on that could result in radical new features of organisms. That's the imaginary part. He based his theory on something that could be observed. You know, the actions of human breeders and breeding different kinds of pigeons and different kinds of cattle and different kinds of horses and different kinds of dogs and cats we can observe that. But what we can observe is that the varieties that are produced by this process don't result in any new species or any radically new feature of an organism. Uh, that's what we can observe. So the imaginary part of Darwin's theory is that radically new features of organisms can be produced by this process. I don't think so.